AP Calculus AB. Uh, in this video, we're asked to use the limit process to find the area of the bounded region. So we, we have this function here. We have y is equal to x squared plus 2, and the interval that we're going to be looking on is from 0 to 1. So the first thing we have to remember is that using the limit process, it kind of looks like this, doesn't it? It's the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, right? Summation of f of ci times delta x. Just a really quick idea here. This is what I want to go through with you. This looks really bad, but it's not. This is base times height, which is the area of a rectangle. And this just says add the area of each rectangle, right? And then we're going to take that limit there. So this is not too bad. Also have to remember that when we calculate ci, we use a plus i over n. And when we calculate change of x, that's just the distance that we're going to cover, b minus a over n. So in this case, it starts to fall out like this. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation of f of x, right? So here it's going to equal 0 because our starting point is 0. 0 plus i over n. So do it this way. 0 plus i over n is that, isn't it? And then this is a square function, right? This is a square function. So this square right here is this one right here. This positive 2 is this positive 2 right here, right? And that's our f of this thing, isn't it? And then times change of base. And the change of base in our case is 1 minus 0 over n, which is 1 over n, isn't it? All right? So that should give us a good start. Now we just have to just kind of start going through this, clean us up a little bit. Remember that right now we're in sigma notation, and our goal here is to get to some to our summation formula. So this is sigma notation, and keeping in mind that we, we want out of this as soon as possible. So I'm going to simplify this a little bit, and I'm going to keep using my good notation here. And this thing squared is, isn't it i squared over n squared, right? Plus 2 times 1 over n. I have my parentheses set up good. Yes, I do. And we need to keep this i over this, right? Now what I'm going to do is I want to get out of my sigma notation and into, su into summation formulas. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start breaking this out. We know that we can partition this out. So just to show you one time that I would definitely, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to take I'm going to take 1 over n squared. That's this 1 over n squared here, right? Times the summation of i squared. And the reason I want to get this broken out to i squared is because we have a summation formula that goes to that, don't we? Plus plus the summation 1 to n of 2, right, times 1 over n. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and bring this thing in. So 1 over n there, and this was in 1 over n times n, 1 over n squared is n cubed, isn't it? Now I'm just going to start doing my math here, and we know our summation formulas. So now finally to summation formulas. So I'm going to go into the summation formulas. And they look like this, I believe. And we would have 1 over n cubed. And the summation formula for this, if you look this up, is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6, right? So I'm replacing i squared with its summation formula. And the summation formula for a constant is 2 times that, so I get 1 over n. That's this 1 over n right here. And the summation formula that goes to a constant is a constant times n, so that's 2n, right? Hopefully this is making some sense to you. This cleans up a little bit. This n right, I'm going to take this n out right here and reduce this one by 1. I'm just factoring some stuff out to make it easier for myself. When I multiply this, I'll get 2n over n, which is just 2, so this gives me positive 2 here. All right, so let's, I'll go back and do it this way. So the limit as n goes to infinity. And then look, I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this out. So as I FOIL this out, it comes out looking like this. Here's my 1 over n squared. 
As I FOIL this out, I get 2n squared plus 3n plus 1 all over 6. And that's just me simplifying this through FOIL. I am going to go ahead and simplify this, that 1 over n times 2n is 2n over n, which is just 2, as I did in the above line. All right. Now I'm going to start to partition this out. Believe it or not, we're almost done. It doesn't look like it. I'm going to start to partition this out. But what I have to get you to buy is this idea right here, and that's that it's this over this, and then this over this, and then this over this. So I'm going to break it out into different fractions. And as I do, I'm going to start to simplify it. So I'm going to get this. I'm going to get the limit. And, go, and if you're wondering, do I have to keep writing this? If you're taking college calc, especially if it's honors calculus at a, at a major university, your professor wants to see this notation. If I was doing this um, for a multiple choice question on the AP exam, I'd be skipping a bunch of this stuff. So, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get 2n squared over 6n squared. Can you see that? 2n squared over n squared. There's that 6, right? This plus sign is this one. 3n over 6n squared. I keep multiplying this times this. This plus sign is this one. This one is this one. And n squared times 6 is 6n squared, right? Plus 2. And hopefully you can see how this all breaks out. It breaks out pretty cleanly, doesn't it? n squared over n squared is 1, so that gives me 2 6 here, doesn't it? n over n squared is just over n. This stays the way it does. So now I'm going to take the limit of each of these pieces and to save a little bit of time for you, I'm not going to show you doing that, but this is what I'm doing. I'm taking the limit of this, and I'm going to take the limit of this, and then I'm going to take the limit of this, and I'm going to take the limit of that. And I hopefully we can agree that the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 6 is just 2 6, otherwise known as 1 3rd, isn't it? The limit of this, right? This number at the top stays constant. This number at the bottom is going to approach infinity. So it's going to get this big number at the bottom with a small number on top. That number is going to approach zero, isn't it? This one, for the same reason, will approach zero. And we know that that the limit as n approaches infinity of 2, because there's no n involved at all, is still 2. It has no, n has no, the change in n has no effect on this, does it? So it's going to be 2. And if you don't mind, I'm going to show my 2 as 6 thirds, and hopefully you can see why, because of this and this. And I'm going to say that that area bounded is 7 thirds. Look, I hope this was really helpful. And this is one of those problems where you just really, really have to go over it and do a bunch of these problems. I hope this was helpful. I look forward to your comments. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks for the support.